I'm on East Clay Street, standing outside the White House of the Confederacy. This was a private home given to President Jeff Davis and his family, so they have a residence in Richmond, Virginia. At this place, the family stayed. Jeff Davis entertained. One of his sons, Joseph, I believe it was, fell off the balcony around the side and died in 1864, which really upset the president and his wife. Um, the owner of this residence originally was a man named Dr. John Brockenborough. Um, like I said, he stayed here until the Civil War and then he rented it out to the Confederate Congress for Davis and his family to live here. At the end of the Civil War, it was occupied by Union soldiers. It is now in a rundown part of the city. Well, not rundown, but it's um, right in the midst of a hospital complex. Uh, it stood on its own at one stage. I could look down to my right and you'd see where Bloody Run was, the valley that led down where years ago there were many a duel fought. Um, behind here, Jeff Davis, although he resided here, he worked further down, his offices were further down towards the city, towards the south side, um, where he would meet with his generals and plan his campaigns, or help plan the campaigns. I'm just going around the corner where the Museum of the Confederacy once existed, it's gone now, it doesn't exist at all. Uh, there's still some remnants around the corner of the Civil War. I'm going to show you these bits now. This is the residence of General Robert E. Lee, commander of the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia, between 1864 and 1865. After the war, he retired here. After, well, after the surrender at Appomattox, he came back to Richmond and lived here for a while. Um, and there's some famous pictures of Lee and his sons standing in the porchway here um, this is gives a little board here that'll give you a bit of signage tell you something about it there so uh, there another little bit of history hidden away in richmond i'm standing behind the camera now this long iron shaft was the propeller shaft from the CSS Virginia, previously known as the Merrimack, which was famous for being one of the participants in the first ironclad battle at sea. The Monitor and the Merrimack, March 1862. The, the Confederate ship went out in the morning, sank and burned two Union vessels, the Congress and the Cumberland. Um, and then the next day it went down to finish off another Union ship and um, the Monitor appeared just by accident and they fought a duel for hours and the result was that the Union ship the Monitor withdrew first when, when Captain Warden was hit in the blinded in his eyes but the Merrimack or the Virginia was also in quite a bad way it had engine trouble and it was stuck on the mud for a while but the Union ship withdrew first but they called it a draw but I think the Confederate ship came off better because it stayed longer. The one who leaves the battlefield is usually classed as the loser. This is all that's left of what was here before at the Museum of the Confederacy. I'm outside St Paul's Church in downtown Richmond. It was here in April, early April 1865, that President Jeff Davis, while attending services, received a courier from General Robert E. Lee and the siege lines who commanded the Confederate defences of Richmond and Petersburg that the Yankees had broken his lines at Five Forks and were about to launch a major offensive and he must evacuate Richmond. Jeff Davis was shocked but he didn't show it and he got his family out and started the evacuation of Richmond. The Confederate army eventually withdrew part of it through Richmond and went west towards Appomattox Courthouse where it surrendered on April the 9th, 1865. Also at this church, General Robert E. Lee had his own pew, so did other dignitaries, and it was here that in February 1865, the funeral of General John Pegram took place, less than a month after his wedding took place here. He was killed at Hatcher's Run, um, and his, his service was here in the Church of St. Paul's. Stonewall Jackson did not attend this church. He attended the Second Presbyterian Church further up, I might hopefully show you that one later. We are near Capitol Square. If you look in this direction, that is Capitol Square. 
Oh no, it's not. If you look in this direction, that is Capitol Square. You can probably see the monument of George Washington there. I'm near the bell tower in Capitol Square. The Capitol is behind me. It's all covered up for work. Never ending. Every time I come here, there's work going on and it's all covered up. You can't see much at all. So I've come to the old bell tower that was here in the Civil War. Richmond became the capital of the Confederacy in 1861 after Virginia seceded from the Union. The original capital was down in Montgomery, Alabama, but it was too small for the government. Um, apparently Christopher C. Memminger, who was Secretary of the Treasury in 1861, said his office was in his pockets. So just shows you the size of Montgomery. Richmond was the, one of the biggest cities in the South and it was here to please to appease Virginia as well. They decided to move the Confederate capital to Richmond, which is only 100 miles from Washington. So between Richmond and Washington, most of the fighting in Virginia, the major battles, was fought in that area. Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, the Seven Days Campaign down on the peninsula, and the Siege of Petersburg, the Battle of the Wilderness, Manassas, first and second, all the big battles fought. Not all of them, there was many fought in the far west, uh, but this area was classed as the sort of the first class part of the Confederacy where industry, Richmond had sort of got ironworks down by the river, which I'm going to take you down to show you in a minute. Richmond held out, it was under siege towards the end of the war for 10 months. It eventually fell in April 1865 after, after Lee's army was defeated at the siege. So uh, then it was surrendered to the Yankees. Uh, a big fire took place here. Abraham Lincoln came here shortly after uh, to see what his opponent's city looked like. It was his one and only visit to Richmond during the Civil War, or after the Civil War. Hmm. 